All right, thanks for checking out Cars, Shops, and Collections. I appreciate you watching the show. If you haven't subscribed, you can do so right below. In today's episode, if you like the 80s, if you love the 80s, you're going to like this episode. We've got a 1988 Pontiac Trans Am GTA. Gene, you know what GTA stands for? No. Good times ahead. <laughs> nice. Actually, it stands for Gran Turismo Americano, but good times are ahead. Ron is the owner. Let's get in my car and go see Ron and his Pontiac Trans Am GTA. Turn right. And then right again down this alley. Oh, here's the alley. Oh, there it is, poking out, see it? Look at that. That is 1980s cool, man. Look at that. Perfect. Just waiting for us. I love how you have it positioned. This is perfect, Ron. Woo! The epitome of 80s cool. What's going on, man? Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for having us, man. I appreciate it. This is Gene, our photographer here. Gene, here it is. 1988 Pontiac Trans Am. GTA. Hi, I'm Ron. Um, today I'm going to show you my 1988 Pontiac GTA. And this really is, I mean, it's a remarkable uh, piece of machinery. The Pontiac, uh, the Firebird, 1967 to 2002. So we got a Gen 3 here, which was 1982 to 1992, kind of later in the run. But this is the second year of the GTA. This is the gem of the Pontiac division in the late 80s. What drew you to this car? I was uh, actually kind of working, dropped by my buddy's place that had a shop, and it was sitting there. And I just kind of fell in love with it. Um, I've had the T-tops, but I just love the hard top on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it had the 5.7 in it. So I wanted the engine that uh, had the best engine that the Pontiac had to offer. And you were a police officer, LAPD, for how many years? For 27 years. 27 years. And you were telling me this was, this was your retirement gift to yourself? This is, this is the one thing I gave to myself when I retired. Well, well-deserved, well-deserved. Thank you for protecting our community. And this is quite the, uh, quite the retirement gift. Uh, Gene, come around the front here, because I want to start with the front of the car, because yeah, you have the, the flip-up headlights. Yes. Do they both work? They both work? Do they ever get stuck? No. Because I, I had a Pontiac Fiero. A little bit different, but I had a Pontiac Fiero. And with a Pontiac Fiero, the one light would go up, and this light would go up, but it wouldn't go down. So you're always driving with that one headlight up. Right. Now, this one goes up and down um, pretty easily. Sometimes when, it, uh, when the battery needs to be a little bit more charged up and drive around, it may take a little bit slower time. But for the most part, this goes up and down. The fog lamps work. It's all... Uh, it's all solid. Down here, just the, right here, the Pontiac right here. The emblem right there, that's cool. We go around the side here. Classic Trans Am, the honeycomb wheels. That's something that pops when you see this car. That's one thing I fell in love with. It was original wheels. Um, it, it just it pops with the red, it pops with black. It does, it goes, yeah, it goes with all the colors. Now, were you always like a Pontiac guy growing up? Were you into muscle cars as a kid? Yeah, my, when I was 14, I played for a baseball, in baseball out and. California, and my uh, coach had a Smoking the Bandit Trans Am, uh -huh. and I just, I was like, okay, I gotta have a Trans Am. So I've had a few Trans Ams, this is the sweetest one. So you had like, what, Gen 2 Trans Ams? I had a Gen 4 and two other Gen 3s. Okay, so, okay, Gen 3 guy, all right. Yeah, I mean, I love the Gen 3s over the 4s. I, I think the Gen 3 is so cool. You know, I'm a product of the 80s. I see this, I think, of Knight Rider. Um, when then I was in high school, this was the car that my buddies had. And then the Gen 2 Trans Am, was so popular that it pushed the Gen 3 back by what, maybe I think it was a year pushed yeah. it back. But really cool, can we pop the trunk here? Yeah. Something about the glass too, the, the, the curvature of the glass, nice and clean back here. Yeah, it pops up now because I, I got the Hawk wing. So this is a brand new fiberglass wing Whoa. that came on it, that I put on it. Uh, it stays open too. Oh yeah, these shocks are, I replaced the shocks. You replaced shocks. them? Yeah, it stays open. And then is this here your luggage? Yeah, the from the luggage it right pulls in. right over. Pulls right up. Over. And just, it pulls right up, so you, you cover that luggage, cover those groceries. Yeah, that's the one thing I loved about this car. The inside was like hardly used. We can just tell by the back here, the trunk too. The trunk looks great. And this is all original. Let me shut this down here. 
And all of them had the NIN stickers oh, on there. NIN stickers, okay. Uh, Let me pop that up. I want Gene to see that here. Everyone here. So that's the VIN sticker right here of the car right there? Yeah, and all the doors. That's, that's unusual for a third gen because usually something's been replaced. Uh-huh. And when the guy that I bought it from, he looked at it and he says, here, look at all these stickers are all over the place. That tells you this is original. Before you got it, did you do the backstory, one owner? Or? Yeah, I kind of ran it on when I was at my desk at, as a detective. I was <laughs> here, what, a perk of the job. <laughs> I found out it was made. It was uh, built in Van Nuys, California. Oh, it was. It's California. And it car. Uh, went to uh, Calabasas, and then uh, it went to a shop where my buddy ended up picking up because the the gal didn't want to pay for the. I think it was like five thousand dollar bill, and he picked it up, and then. I, I kind of picked it up from the two of them. <laughs> the benefit of being a police officer, these things you can run. Yeah. There was an option um, with, the, with the Gen 3, it was called the, the, the notchback. Yes. And then so that would be, instead of having this swooping rear window, it was straight. And then, it almost looked like a station wagon. Yes, yeah, and then you would have the trunk and, and people got that option because they wanted it to look a little bit different than a Camaro. Um, I think this is cool, really classic. Yeah, I, I like this better. Can we see you on the inside? Yeah, All right. just, yeah, it's open. Pop it open. For you, when you were a police officer, what was your daily driver? Was it the Caprice Classic? What were you driving? I like the, the Chevy Caprice, uh -huh. 90s, 80s, 90s Caprice, was my favorite car. That's what you were driving out there? Yeah, when we went to a Ford, I was there. Eh. Was it the Crown Vic? Yeah, I uh -huh. didn't like that. And then, then we had, as a detective, I had a, a little Honda Accord, and we were, just, we were dressed in plain clothes and stuff, so I just <laughs> drove around. Did you ever, with your time on the force, ever have a high-speed chase going up against a Trans Am? No. No? No. It's 80s cool inside this thing. I mean, this is, I mean, a time warp. This goes back to the 1980s. Gene, focus on the steering wheel. Because take yourself, you're back in 1988. To have all the, the, gate, the knobs here to control the radio, 1988, that's ahead of its time. And very Knight Rider-ish, too. Yes, yeah, with the, uh, the tack up here, total kit, total Knight Rider. Does this have the lumbar seats? Yes. That's, the, that's what made me go back to the third gen too. I just felt that it was more comfortable than actually the fourth gen. Uh huh. So this has all the electric lumbar and it's a little bit wider. So that new radio inside here, CD player in this? Uh, yeah, I do, it's a CD and it pops up. But it's the dash too, this is, I mean, this is Knight Rider. Yeah, the, the digital dash is a little harder to find. But going back to the lumbar seats too, 1988, that's kind of ahead of its time. Yes. Can we see under the hood? Yeah. You, you were right, the interior too, super clean interior. How many miles? This has uh, 95, 95,000. 95,000? Guess how many on this right here? Turn around, how many on this? You probably have 60,000 now? 80,000. 80,000, you've been driving a lot. 80,000 miles. Yeah, all these shot, the shocks are all replaced. Shocks, radiator, alternator. So it's 5.7? 5.7, it's actually, this engine's actually got uh, about 6,000 miles on it. Okay. It's, I replaced it about uh, two, two and a half years ago. This engine, very similar to a C4. Yes, you're doing comparisons exactly. To stuff of the 80s. Yeah, this, this, the 5.7 was more made for the Corvettes and stuff mm -hmm. of the 80s. And then they, they started putting it into the Trans Ams, I, my feeling, I know they put some in the Camaros, but they wanted to make this. The Trans Ams are always kind of just a little bit more mm -hmm. when it gets to the GTS, the uh, GTA. Um, and this right here too, by the way, I was talking about that, the uh, flip up headlights, if your headlight ever doesn't go up, doesn't go down, it's this right here, you're twisting this, and it'll raise it and lower it. Yep. <laughs> Many times in my Pontiac <laughs> here. I can see. <laughs> putting that thing down. Oh yes. Very nice. You see the gauges lit up? See, and it's saying left door open because the store's open. Oh, it's got the, uh, the digital for the... Uh... Yeah, it'll say Pontiac. Uh... Oh, it does? Okay. That's neat. And they come around the front here too, Gene. We're talking about in the back, the bin tag. We popped open the trunk. You have it again up here as well. So this is what you're looking at to see. So yeah, right here says Pontiac. It says Pontiac okay, so everything is... Oh, and the system's the good, cool. it's Pontiac. System, system okay, Pontiac. Cool. So neat. 
Let's go back to 1988. Top songs of 1988. Guns N' Roses, Sweet Child of Mine. I mean, imagine driving that song blaring and blasting on your radio. Oh, yes. Yeah, I get you know, my thing. I got the Pink Floyd and I got all, the, all that stuff when I'm driving it. I love driving it, even though the air conditioning is great on this thing. I love driving it with the windows. This is windows down, music up. Yeah. And my dog loves this thing. <laughs> what kind of dog? I've got a, a little uh, Beagle mix. Uh huh. Meagle, it's a mini pitcher Beagle mix. So there was a, here in Las Vegas, there was a big car show uh, at a casino here in town called the South Point. So the car show was last weekend. It's one of the biggest car shows in Las Vegas. Summertime, August, indoors, everyone comes. Uh, the guy that won um, the best in show, uh, the People's Choice Award, his name is Steve, 68 Camaro. We did an episode on his, on his Camaro, really cool car. But what I noticed, I was watching, I was watching you in your car, everyone that was walking by, everyone stops, everyone stops. There is, people love, these 88 or late 80s Trans Ams. They were all saying, I remember this. I had one of these, uh -huh. I had one of these. And I can't believe I don't have it. I, I have one of these. And I says, I says yeah, and I, that's kind of why I went back and got it. Right? Yeah, because, you know, I graduated high school in the 80s and I just remembered the, you know, Knight Rider, the 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 sports car kind of thing. Yes. Because the sports car kind of dropped off a little bit there. And then they brought this back. They brought this and the, the Camaro back. You said, oh, okay, this is, this is what I want. I do feel like I'm back in high school. My buddy Eric Luff had one of these in high school and I feel like I'm sitting in his car driving home from football practice, windows down. Oh yeah, I, I love the leg room in this. Uh, um, the fourth gen's a little bit tighter, but I mean, I had fun in the car, I had a 2002. You had the last run, the last of it, huh? Yeah. And, Fourth gen, front end, kind of rounder. Rounder, and the back is kind of rounder. Um, it was it, it was nice, but this I just this always attracted me. Mm -hmm. So as far as Trans Am, the Screaming Chicken, the Hood Emblem, was, was it available in the in the Gen Three, or just it was not it was not an option back then? I don't I don't know that it was an option. I've seen it in a couple of cars. Uh -huh. I just think it belongs on the, the Smoking the Bandit car. Mm -hmm. It just, to me, it doesn't feel right on this car. Um, all the badging on this car is, kind of tells you what it is. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. Because I've seen some of them and some of them put on, I just, it just doesn't, that doesn't attract to me. Now in my garage, yeah, I have the wings, yeah, yeah, I have that stuff. Ready, yeah. <laughs> so have you been in a high-speed chase? Oh yes, I was in a uh, 20, 30 of them, I don't know, 40 of them. So many of them that uh, it, it just in LA you. That's the one thing that makes LA so like, officer so good there is that you deal with so much in that kind of uh, an area. Uh -huh. So whether it's stolen cars or pursuits or um, batteries or whatever, they're just it's a constant thing for those officers that work those areas. So and cars are stolen so much there. Uh, I worked auto theft. I would probably have, just on my desk alone, 100 stolen cars in a month, easily. So you'd be out trying to track them down? Yep. Yeah. What was the TV show you were on in the 90s? It was uh, LAPD Life on the Beat. So if someone's watching right now, they can track you down and see some of you, see, see you in the action in the 90s. Yeah, if they can find it on the internet. So what do we have here? This is your, what are these gauges, these buttons here? That'll tell you, uh, you can read your trip. Okay. You can do your trip miles. stuff, All right. your miles. Like in the 80s, everything was push button. Mm -hmm. How's the back seat, Gene? Um, it's very tiny. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Compared to, right. uh, was it Robin's Trans Am? Yeah, Robin has, uh, I've never met Robin here in Las Vegas. She's got a 1980 um, Trans Am pace car edition. Pace car? Yeah, beautiful condition. Gene liked that back seat. But the digital speedometer too. Do you still have the original radio? Yeah. Yeah, I tried to, I tried to find somebody that would refurbish it, but uh, the radio has a uh, kind of a device in it. Back in the day, if it got stolen, it more or less shut down the car. No kidding. Yeah, so you had to be real careful about how you set it, because there's the resistor on the key. Ron, this is neat, man. 
That's the one thing that was nice. All that usually you see those, and that's all pulled out. Yeah, and this taken is care. Original. Keep maps and whatever's out here. Yeah, that's cool. Everything's original. That. Like I said, I I don't know. I think the grill was a really small grill because the only dent that's putting in the seat now is just me. <laughs> <laughs> the back seat too. It's clean. Yeah, I don't think anybody ever rode that. Well, I was gonna say, most people didn't because they're so tight. Right. You know, you got buddies and your buddy's got a bigger car, you're gonna take the bigger car. Actually, since I've had it, you're the first one back there. <laughs> hey, Gene. Kind of <laughs> like I was the first in Robbins. Yes, you were. <laughs> Look at that, Gene. <laughs> That's Gene's goal in life to be the first in back seats of old, old school cars. But real quick, before you shut it off, yeah. so a system check. You press this right here. Door. Lamps. Door. Lamp. Cool it. Washer. Okay. Funny, okay. That is neat. That is neat. They wanted all, but it was all buttons. It is really, you can see down too, it's a little bit darker out too, just the, the digital dash. Ron, thank you so much for, for first off, My pleasure. the force and protecting us, but also for showing us your, uh, your GTA, which stands for Good Times Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> if you want your car, shop, or collection featured on the show, then shoot us an email at cars, shops, and collections at gmail.com. That's cars, shops, and collections at gmail.com. And thanks for watching, and be sure and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes of Cars, Shops, and Collections.